Hi guys, welcome back. Actually, it's part seven. I got a little. I didn't. I had to check to see if I was. It was the right part, but because I didn't realize how much I had recorded. But yeah, part seven of Seduce Me, and they're kissing, and it's getting kind of heated, and yeah. I could feel him pull on the tail of my bow, releasing it and following his hand off from around my neck. He moved the ribbon to his pocket before gently unbuttoning the top jewel inside my box. This is going too fast. <laughs> too fast. The desire in my body drove me insane, forcing a moan to escape my lips as he ran kisses from my lips down to my exposed neck. As he began to ravish my neck and shoulder in hot kisses, I leaned my head back and let a pleasurable sigh escape my lips, digging in his woo with bliss and his passionate kisses on my skin. Damon didn't stop touching and kissing me and he will moan and gasps when out of my mouth into the open air. He may have been full, but he was as hot as I like. I couldn't even comprehend how much time I spent making out. I was lost in the pleasure that I didn't care. Call it sinful, but I didn't care. I loved it. His touch, his kiss, his heat. I desired beyond anything that moment. Whoa, 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 whoa. I desired it beyond anything at that moment, even as I always kisses down to my chest to just above my bra. My heart was beating wildly in my chest, and something about Damien intrigued me immensely, but something made my heart quicken for him. It couldn't have been love, but it was too passionate to be lust. What was it? However, I began to feel dizzy. Seeing the sky start to spin almost wildly, I gripped to Damien's shoulder, trying to signal him to stop, but my mind faded to black before I could let out another sound. I felt good. I didn't care that I was blacked out. I felt warm and fuzzy in the darkness. I never knew indulging in that kind of passion would be that good. I just... I now just waited to awaken, hopefully in a good way. My eyes eventually fled open, fluttered open, adjusting to the sight around me. Whoa, it's a night time? Dang. I felt a familiar silhouette underneath me, letting me know that I was in my bed. I slowly sat up, stretching from the tiredness that still lingered. I felt a very soft pain on my neck and shoulders, and I could feel my swollen lips pulse gently and healing. However, when I looked down at my body, I saw that my shirt had been pulled back up and rebuttoned. Nothing happened between me and Damien. I was just missing my ribbon. Before I got out of bed, though, I spotted my ribbon on the pillow beside the one I slept on. I was tied around the small pen in a nice bow, with a small note attached to it. I gently slipped to the note from the tie and opened it to read. Thank you. I indulged myself, but I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Damien. Alright. Can I pretend that never happened? I stared, I stared the note, letting a small smile grace my lips. I stared at the note, letting a small smile grace my lips. He indulged himself as much as I did. I enjoyed it. It was cute though, to imagine him thanking me for something we both did and enjoyed. I brought the note to my chest, letting the memories of our meeting flood my mind. I indulged it myself too, Damien. I looked at the time out of curiosity. The large white numbers on my phone showed 5.31 p.m. Yikes, four hours of being knocked out. And I still feel tired. It was Sunday, so I was allowed to sleep longer if I wanted to. The remainder of the night went surprisingly uneventful. The boys continued to train with each other, but were kind enough to stop and make me dinner. I was glad for that. And surprisingly, the food was perfect, but I felt a little empty without the boys to eat with me. The most likely... They most likely had already eaten, but still, I felt lonely. I couldn't let it bother me. I ate and went back to my room to study and sleep. Surprisingly, I felt good going to bed that night. I 
felt like I could have a peaceful sleep after the previous rough nights I had. I felt good. I had drifted to sleep and woke up almost flawlessly the next morning. No grogginess, no aches, perfectly energized and bright-eyed. Man, how long has it been since I've had that much good sleep? I looked to my alarm clock. I woke up ten minutes before my alarm. Well, hey, I must be lucky today. Karma owned me for some luck, owed me for some luck. After I had gone through all in merely a handful of days, I deserved to get some good luck. Ecstatic for the day ahead, I turned off my alarms before they could ring and got dressed. However, my phone started to quickly buzz from an incoming text. Huh? Who's texting me this early? Yo, Anderson! You're carpooling with us from now on. We're not letting you waste your money on a bus. Get ready and be at your gate at 7 stat. Oh. Yay! Smiles. My friends were the best. I couldn't drive yet, and I didn't have cars, so it was awesome that my friends would let me carpool. I checked the time. 6.30. Just in time to eat breakfast. Perfect. I can eat some breakfast before they come. I packed my bag and carried it downstairs toward the kitchen. As I entered the dining room, I saw a plate of eggs, toast, and bacon sitting on the table. A fresh steaming cup of coffee and sat next to the plate with the sugar and creamer on the side. I walked to the table and couldn't believe what I was seeing. Who made this? As I spoke aloud, a small red note caught my attention. Have a good day, yours. My heart skipped a beat as I finished. I could tell it was from one of the boys. Maybe it was from him. I smiled before pouring the note pouring, putting the note in my bag and eating it. The food was so delicious I devoured everything every amazing bite. I looked to the time again. Time to go. I quickly rushed to the doors, checking myself in the passing mirror. I wasn't wanting to impress anyone, but I still needed to look decent. Before I could reach the handle of the door, however, someone took my hand. Huh? I turned to see Damien, who was holding my hand back with a concerned frown on his face. My name. Your name? My true name isn't Damien. I want you to know my real name, if something were to happen. His true name? What did he mean? Why was he telling me this now? I remember reading about a demon's name from the journal I read yesterday. If you knew a demon's true name, you could summon them to you, no matter where you were or where they were. Damien gently pulled me to him and leaned close to whisper in my ear. My name is Ezrol. <laughs> I cannot get enough of this voice actor's voice. <laughs> As I said his name, I could feel it lock into my memory. Something in my head would make sure I would never forget it. Damien pulled away and stared at me despite still carrying worry in his eyes. If you are in any danger, call my name. I promise, I'll come and help you. I stared up at Damien, unable to say anything. I could only nod in response. Damien smiled before releasing my hand and heading into the dining room. Something told me that name would be used eventually. And right on cue, Naomi drove up to the gate with Susie waving me down. I rushed out the door, out the door, and we headed to school, take, talking about the homework and the coming day. We made it into school without a hitch. Our lockers were in the same part of the hall, so we quickly unloaded and we needed to, well, what we needed to, and got our important books and necessities. First incident of the day. As I walked towards Suzu and Naomi, we were both walking, both walking, both waiting. Okay, as I walked towards Suzu and Naomi, who were both waiting for me on the opposite side of the hall, something hooked my ankle and made me fall forward. <laughs> Whoa! Ow! Hey, are you okay? Who did that? Lisette? The three of us looked back to see Lysette and her gaggle of friends. Lysette had a look of complete innocence when the girls around her giggled like no tomorrow. Why, you little... Suzu, don't! I felt a giant fire of anger burn into my 
in my stomach and I, as I stared at Lysette. Today was no... <sighs> um, yeah. Today was not the only time that this had happened to me. However, it was now clear who was behind these incidents. Even if she was innocent and one of her goonies did it, it was now obvious that Lysette was a mastermind just from the look on her face. She was no friend, nor would she ever be. I had to do something. Do you have to? Can't you just ignore her? Walk away. No. I wasn't going to bring myself to her level. She was a bully, but I was not going to let her get to me. I had to be stronger than her, and only then would I have, would I have beaten her. I stood up and brushed myself off, pretending nothing had happened. Anderson, you okay? That was a pretty bad fall. Yeah, I'm fine. A fall like that is nothing. I merely smiled at them, not wanting to let them know that the pain rushing through my body from the fall. My arms were quaking, my shoulders were pulsing, but I remained content-faced. I quickly gathered up my belongings and nodded to my two friends. Come on, we'll be late for history. Suzu and Naomi looked at each other before frowning and nodding to me. Naomi and Suzu flanked me as we began to walk to class, away from the gaggle of bullies. As we walked away, I could barely see Suzu flipping the middle finger to the group behind us from the corner of my eye. Friggin' bunch of Lisette feet lickers. That's gross, Suzu. <laughs> it's true. It's all... OMG! Lisette is the best! Let's follow her around, because we obviously don't have lives. <laughs> Naomi and I could not help but laugh. The group behind us, however, did not like Suzu's words. At least my dad doesn't screw around in the black market to keep a stupid casino running. Suzu stopped. Naomi and I stopped as well to look back at Suzu, who was completely red with anger. Suzu slowly turned her head to the group, glaring daggers at them. The fuck did you just say? I had to act fast. I placed my hand on Suzu's shoulder and gripped tightly. If only she could try to push my hand away. Suzu, they're not worth it. Let's go. No, I think it's about time we taught them some manners! You're gonna get expelled. Suzu! I looked up at Lysette and her group. Lysette had a widely amused smile on her face, which irked me to no end. Nevertheless, I knew that fighting wasn't going to get us anywhere. Let's go. I grabbed Suzu by the shoulder roughly, pulling her back to Naomi and me. Suzu tried to step toward the group, but Naomi held onto her other shoulder. We held onto Suzu, who fought against our hands as we marched to class. Surprisingly, the rest of the day went off without another incident. I went to my classes, had a lunch, and was anxious to get home. As the bell rang for school to end, I felt my phone vibrate in my pocket. Huh? A text? From Dad? I'll be picking you up today. Make sure you're ready to go when I get there. He's being mind-controlled. That's my guess. That's kind of a surprise. I quickly headed back to my locker and got my things before waiting for Naomi and Suzu. Hey, are you ready to go? Actually, my dad's picking me up. Really? Okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. We'll drive home together next time. Tell your dad that we've got you covered from now on. Uh, yeah, <laughs> all right. Even while I laughed, something didn't seem right. My dad texted me to say this. Why was he going to pick me up? Had I done something had I done something wrong? I didn't know. I waved Naomi and Suzu goodbye before heading off to the usual spot where my dad picked me up. I took the time to listen to my music while I waited. I need to go to another Rise of the Phoenix concert. Eventually I had played the entire album with no one showing up. What the hey? That's never late, especially not this late. Yeah, it's a trap. And that's where I'm going to stop today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!